Robin Hood episode 6, and this has got a sting. But it could always be bigger. Guess we found out why he's called Little John. What's good, Sherwood? It's not this attire. Welcome to our annual Lionheart Day. Our, our what, sorry? Welcome to our annual. Yeah, that's what I thought he said, mate. Annual. Missed an entire syllable. Gotta hear you roar! That's a cheer, not a roar. Let me hear you roar, yeah! Not renowned for their English language skills, are they, lions? We get a montage of loads of people dancing, just standing there on our own, just vibing. They've got a load of coloured ribbons that I'm sure mean something, but I'm never going to care enough to look. What are you thinking of your first Lionheart day? I'm thinking, why does a tower block have a fair in the first place? Like, it doesn't even make sense. They've got all these stands which are selling things, except the only people coming to this are all the unemployed criminal scum from the tower block. This is like taking a load of vegan to a sausage factory. What are they going to do? Cry? Oh, it just looks so delicious, but I can't have any. That's what Hollywood celebrities should do as they walk around California. Carry a packet of bacon with them to ward off amorous vegans. Works a treat on Robert Downey Jr. I would have loved it. So why do you look like some kid stole your ice cream? Maybe he did. He's stolen everything else. Let's face it, he's not going to defend himself. A lot to think about lately. I'll be a first. What happened? Were you watching Sesame Street and they said, how many words can you think of beginning with J? I thought we were somewhere good. No, you're in Sherwood and Forest, love. <laughs> Good isn't an adjective that's ever been used for this place. You know, being here brings a lot back. Puts me in my own head. And she's like, oh, I thought we were banging and now you're upset with me. He's like, no, this is Lionheart Day and I was there when he died, you dumb cow. So tell me about it. No. I watched a guy died isn't something that needs to be redescribed to you. How about you shut up and let him keep his problems to himself like a man? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, later. Oh, later. Yeah, later I'll describe to you how I watched my best friend die. Oh, you must be really fun at parties. <laughs> Make sure you'll be locking yourself in your room and just painting black onto canvas. I've, uh, been thinking about Mary. There is something about Mary. I'm sorry, even I feel ashamed about that one. <laughs> All the Zoomers in the audience are like, what does he mean? <laughs> Google it, it'll be fun. Been thinking about Mary. Oh, it's Marion. Sorry. That makes the joke even worse. But Robin kicks off. I don't trust Marion. She had her own angle at the party. I think she's lied to me. And then we find out why he's annoyed. It's actually not because his best friend died and this is the anniversary of it. But no, she did seem pretty into you at the party. That's true. Robin needed a distraction and so her tactic was to be a massive whore. It worked. My face when I get caught. How dare you accuse me of things I've actually done? I know you were playing. We were playing each other. You certainly were. Sorry, sorry. You missed the word with. We were playing with each other. If I don't keep this thing bouncy oh my god they've got a bouncy castle is this it is this the party that they spoke about in episode two who drinks barbecue pets bouncy castle this entire thing is paid for by the ill-gotten gains of stealing somebody else's car you scum I hope you're all having a great time all this was paid for by an innocent victim <laughs> See that. Not if I see you first. We get to see where the rest of their criminal ill-gotten gains have gone. Maybe it's face painting. Apparently we bought benches with it, balloons, and of course a bouncy castle. Bouncy castle? No wonder they're not worried about the locals nicking stuff when it's all paid for by thievery money anyway. Remember to put some veggie burgers on the grill. Remember last year and the only vegan option we had was lettuce? <laughs> What? That's my joke. Somehow the little weedy bloke manages to break through the lock. Like, no way. I mean, that guy's built like he lives on a diet of broccoli and lettuce leaves. There's no way he'd be opening a door normally, let alone through a lock. Barely has enough energy to lift his arm to the handle. I literally made that joke in a video not long ago. <laughs> Besides, isn't that all vegan options? It's just like lettuce, prey food. I'm gonna feed you stuff my food eats. Why would you even grill them? I mean, the vegetables. The entire point of vegetables is that you can eat them raw. Just start talking into a mate. I mean, grilling them isn't going to make them any better. Only thing that could make that edible is if you added other ingredients to it, you know. Like steak. Remember last year and the only vegan option we had was lettuce? It was a nightmare. The rabbits were pissed. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to be trying to mug the carrots. Things staying civil out there. That'll be a first, won't it? Your daughter walks in. So, by the way, no one's killed anyone, has they? You haven't shot anyone in the face with an arrow out this week, have you? Having a good time. They know the rules. They know the rules. Stop murdering people. <laughs> Normally, you don't have to make that a rule, okay? I don't go to a fair in a park. It's like, oh, by the way, stop murdering people. <laughs> you could please stop mugging people in skyscrapers. We'd all appreciate it. I'm glad you're here to help keep it that way. What, the only reason these people aren't murdering each other, even though they all live in the same tower block is because he's there as the mossel. What kind of society do you live in? I remember in the first week when she said this. Sherwood is more than just a neighborhood. Oh. We've got roots here. Families we've grown up with. Yeah, we've got roots here, but they'll all kill each other unless he physically stops them. People from all over the city are out there. Just because they're welcome doesn't mean they behave. Mm.
No. You're blaming the rest of the city on you being criminals. It's not the rest of the city that's been causing all the trouble, love. But at that moment, an actual civilized person turns up. He's a businessman. You should learn from him. Maybe go to work in once in a while. She's really angry at him, and I don't know why. He's literally never done anything to her. Even the sheriff that shot her, he had nothing to do with. Yeah, ah, you! The person who's completely irrelevant to everything that's ever happened to me. Mr. Prince, if this is your idea of a joke, it's in some bad taste. Nah, if Wanted to make a joke, he would have given you some lettuce leaves. He says, no, I'm here to talk peace. I want to solve all of our problems. I have a van waiting outside that will take you to the Monarch building. You're that doesn't seem like the right idea. I want to solve all of my problems, by the way. Get in the van. No, no, I don't think I will. He hasn't even offered me sweets. You think my mom's just gonna go with you? In a van? That's the dodgy bit. Going with him is not the problem, but please get in the back of my van is is the issue here. At least eat a burger first. After you sent the cop, if- The reason that he sent the sheriffs is because because she was committing crime. It's a legitimate reason to say, can that person be arrested? Anything that happened afterwards isn't his fault. Why would I ever believe that you're for real? Well, he did offer you a million dollars. He's actually never shown you that he'd break his word. He has, I don't think he has broken his word this entire series. Because the hood kidnapped my son. Yeah, he's got you there, love. But luckily we've got all of their faces on CCTV cameras. They left the building. One of them even spoke to a security guard and he's right there. <laughs> Why don't he walk in and go, you kidnapped my son. But he's like, look, I can't have people like you harassing me all the time. I just want peace. He's being perfectly reasonable. Can you please stop assaulting me, stealing from me and kidnapping my son? when I've done nothing to you is a very legitimate argument. And yet, I would like to talk. All he does is step forward to talk to her and he steps in, oh, I need to protect her from you. No, the world needs protecting from you. You're the problem in here, Mr. Little John. She has the nerve to get angry when it's her daughter causing all of the problems. We be, we be committing international assassinations, stealing nuclear weapons, first degree murder and kidnapping people. We're way past Robin at this point. We be robbing, robbing, robbing. We need to get arrested by Interpol. We're gonna get extradited at this point by the end of the series. This crew is like Ocean's Eleven, except they can't count that high. You never put out the China. Now. Probably she's even got China to put out. She's actually managed to go up in my estimation. You're the one that didn't want me going to his penthouse. Yeah, that is stupid. I mean, I can't believe you're bringing him there rather than going to a penthouse. Because he's dangerous. No, you're dangerous. He's just a guy who owns a business. So far, Robin has stolen from him, assaulted him, kidnapped his son, and he's done literally nothing to her. So for some reason, she decided, I'm not gonna meet this entrepreneur unless my lawyer is here. What's he gonna do? Murder me in front of my own lawyer? Well, I don't think Marion would be able to stop him if that was his intention. She's hardly the muscle of the team, but she puts her keys on the table, which apparently have the USB stick on. Cause you know, if you want to carry around illegal documents, just put them on your keys. She's like, I have to do this. This is how we fix everything. Everything I've been fighting. I don't even know what you've been fighting for. Just to continue to live in your crap hole and drag down the entire area with criminals seems to be the reason. What if he's I'm sure he is, but I've got ways to keep him honest. What are you gonna do? Roll over his toe or something? But the mum puts Robin in charge of the fair. And Robin's like, look, everything that happened between us is a mistake. It was a lot and it shouldn't have happened. Can I trust you, Marion? Most pointless question in the entire history of the universe. Can I trust you? Well, if you can't, they're just gonna go yes anyway. And if they're honest, why would they say no? Because that wouldn't even make any sense. Yes. Doesn't show you anything. Are you lying to me? No. Take care of my mom today. Same way you did me at the party, get a hat trick, turn our family tree into a stick. At that moment though, Richard Branson turns up and I'm surprised he doesn't sort of just, ah, the poor. He could like feel his wealth getting sucked out from him as he's standing there. Not by osmosis, it's from all the people nicking stuff from him. Robin didn't steal his watch on the way out. But they have a discussion. Oh, you know each other? Yeah, she went to school with my son. She's being modest. She was the valedictorian and she was the head of every club you can imagine. Of course she was. She's amazing. She's the smartest, bestest lawyerist ever. Just you're never gonna see that, like ever. Why don't we get to business? Remember, this is a lawyer that still lives with her parents, so she's hardly uh, flying high on a career ladder. Although she does have a job, which is a unique experience for this show. He's like, yeah, thanks, love, for that. I wouldn't have known how a chair works without your help and direction guiding me to the flat surface upon where I can rest my arse, you creepy weirdos. I'd walk over and sit in a different seat just to piss her off. But as he walks into the room... 
Don't look too hard in the kitchen, mate. You'll find the jar. Like, can you imagine the horror? Oh, you've got cookies. Ah, calm down, love. I'm not here for that. There's the jar. It's even in the background. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, please reach over and pick up the jar. I am begging you. That's a shame. That's a genuine disappointment. So the kids decide to ruin the general area by just sticking posters of crap everywhere. He's cute, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Won't see me complaining. Calm down, love. She's like 12. She, you shouldn't be commenting on her fella and she shouldn't have a fella in the first place. Gross. Exact. Thank you. It was no better when you said it, though, to be fair. David's 16. What? That guy does not look anywhere near 16. Jalapeno and pineapple on the same pizza? Gross. You'll like it. Hands up, kids. On your knees. If he's 16, how old are you? Are you 16 as well? But Robin's like, oh, I wish I was up there. Instead, I've got sent down here to do this. Mom trusted you with Lion Heart Day. I'm not being funny, love, but it's a bouncy castle and a few tents. Everything that needed to get there is already there. You don't need a product management team for this. They saw the last to go topside, huh? Are you hungry? What? Mate, I hate to break it to you, but you're carrying bottles of water. You can't eat bottles of water, mate. What are you gonna do, gnaw on the plastic? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? I mean, I've got plastic for you. Are you hungry? Recycle it. Yeah, I could eat. She's looking at him like he's a veggie burger. Yeah. I could eat. Calm down. Someone's gonna have to get the jar. Little John turns up, and I'm just surprised no one's nicked anything yet. Like, um, Robin? About Marion? Where are you? She says you'd have to worry about Marion. I've already nicked her keys. I didn't know that was coming. I was just genuinely surprised that they hadn't nicked anything yet. And turns out they had. <laughs> Then nothing is not predictable. The Doctor Who writers have a rule where it's like, nobody's died in a while, we should just kill someone off. Whereas in this, they're just rampant thieves. You stole their keys. Well, judging by how they act about previous episodes, they sh she would consider it just redistribution. She steals keys from the people that have them to give them to the people that don't. Let's hope she don't wipe the USB. Let's hope she doesn't need a car. These are delicious. Are they homemade, Tracy? You're having to feed him cookies because they won't fit in the jar. By Mrs. Soriano. She lives upstairs. You're feeding him third-party cookies. We don't I don't know where they've been. Is that from the weird chicken lady? Straight from Miss Mbatha's hands upstairs. Apartment 421. 421? No. <laughs> oh no. What do you say? They're like almost edible, but not quite. Baker. Her job is cleaning toilets at one of your properties. Oh, she should be grateful that he's given her a job then. You know, kept her employed so she can actually afford her house. Why are we looking down on cleaners in this episode? It's really weird, this disdain you have for the working class. Baker. Her job is cleaning toilets. Especially when you're a sponger. What was that? One of your properties. Yeah, owned you. Piss off. I'm a lawyer, wouldn't be catching me cleaning toilets. What is this? Why are we crapping on people who work for a living? Cut back as if I'm glad I'm helping the community by giving them jobs. It's a good thing. It's weird that she tried to say it wasn't. You scoff. I thought you were gonna call us scum then. But he says, I came here as a kid, I watched them pour the concrete. If you pull the wallpaper back, you might find the fact that I've graffitied this place with crayons. It's like, don't tell her that. She'll be peeling back the wallpaper to start licking it. Oh, I've run out of crayons to eat. I've got cravings. Here he's saying, when that bill passes next week, I'm gonna get sold these buildings and you're all gonna be evicted. Is that what you want? And so instead, she decides that her best tactic is to put on the face of an arsehole and go, they won't do that. Oh, dude, go back to normal businesses. The council won't pass that bill. They won't pass that bill. No, they won't. <laughs> and I think you know that, or you wouldn't be here. And he gives them probably the best deal they're ever going to have in their life. I'll just build you new homes. I will give you free houses around the city, which is better than this crap hole. This is the most reasonable person in the entire city who's actually helping you. This is win-win. Giving you a better home that he's knocking down this crap hole and building something nice and moving decent people into it to improve the area. We've got an entire show about people trying to fend off civilization. You avoid homelessness. I don't have to look like the bad guy. He isn't the bad guy. He's literally offered them free homes. I'm willing to provide new homes for you and developments all around the city. This is an incredible offer. I'd bite his pissing hand off. Actually, no, can't say that, can I? Robin probably would bite his hand off. And I'm not going to make any jokes about looking a gift horse in the mouth. If the shoe fed. It doesn't. He's not a bad guy. He offered you free houses. If I came to your penthouse and offered you money to leave, would you? Depends how much money you offered him. He's a businessman and not an insane twat. Let's say a skyscraper is worth a billion dollars. If you offered him two billion dollars, yes, he'd take it, because he's sensible. Yes. Based economy. I told you. I told you he was sensible, because he could use that money to get something better. For the right price. Yes. Exactly. It's the principle of the thing. Oof. This must be really challenging for us, sitting across the table from someone who has a brain. Of course. Because you're alone up there, aren't you? 
Make it make sense. What? I'm genuinely confused. I run a business, so if I could sell something to make a profit, then I will. You're just alone! What is happening? Sherwood is more than just apartments. What do you think? No, your home is just square footage to you. It's like, well, it is to everybody. That's why people are willing to move. <laughs> The attachment to the location generally comes from the people who are in the location. So if you take your family with you, you make a new home. It's it's amazing how that works. It's more than brick and concrete. It's the people. Exactly. Thank you for agreeing with my earlier point that I didn't know she was about to say. It's the people in the place that make the square footage a home. So if you get new square footage and the people move into your brand new house, then you have a better home. So what gives you the right to just tear that all down and scatter us to the wind? Into our new, vastly improved, far better housing. But you raise an interesting point. So what gives you the right to just- Yeah, what gives you the right? What gives you the right to turn this offer down for everybody else in the apartment. Why don't you go to them and go, by the way, do you want brand new massive houses for free? Rather than living in your pokey little tower block, block surrounded by criminals. Is the real reason you're so angry because you know it's a good offer and everyone would take it. And you just don't want to be left alone. Because deep down you know that you're responsible for your daughter being a criminal and all of her dads running away. This might be a you problem. That is a wonderful photo though, isn't it? Scatter us to the wind. Because you're rich and we're poor? Uh, that's gaslighting. That's what it is. Like this, this, we're the victims feel bad for us. That's what that is. Well, that's why he can afford to give you brand new houses. But if you're poor and someone offers you a new house, thank them. Like Mr. Beast at Halloween gave some kid a house. Imagine if he'd gone, is that, this is disgusting. This is just because you're rich and I'm poor. No, he said, thank you. Like a nice, polite, normal human being. So you can make a buck. He makes a buck and you make a new house. Why are you so angry? My father's legacy is not our problem. You should just tell everybody. That dumb cow up there doesn't want you to improve your life. But she's like, no, we're not going to make it easy for you. We're not going to accept your generosity. You do not get to choose. It's my show. And he's like, look, if you're not going to do a deal, why did you even invite me up here? Because we do agree on one thing. This has gone too far. Are you going to stop your daughter kidnapping people? But the mom was like, look, we need to find a solution. So she invited the mayor. This is the show of legal paperwork. And the mayor's there because it's a photo op, apparently. Yeah, get to go in the newspaper because I've turned up at the pause. Tressy, you've been a pain in my ass, as usual. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, like daughter, like mother. Fill up the condom jar if you need a re-up. My staff has begged me to block your number. I'm not surprised. If I had to spend longer than 30 seconds talking to it, I'd be doing the same. So the mom starts being an ass again. And it's what she specializes in. The reason I've invited you here is so that you can make sure he's on the level. It's like he just offered you a house. The only one being unreasonable in the situation is you. These are excellent. You should try one. Yeah, why don't you try these cookies from apartment 421? Just like everything else in this building, it's illegal. That stage is so fire, there was nowhere to be seen. That stage is so fire, it's just a raised platform, mate. But then the hacker turns up, and I'm not sure if he knows where he is. It depends what he's taken recently. He might be traveling through a different dimension talking to the clockwork owls, we'll have to find out. And I brought snacks for your neighbors. Well, at least we know one of the things he's had. Mealworms, you have some beetles, crickets, some grasshoppers. No. Oh, you haven't. Maybe the kids would like to try? <laughs> I stand against hate. I stand against hate. I stand against hate. I, I can't believe this. It's interesting this character has already had accusations about being a self-insert due to the whole spiritual meditation stuff. Think about your groin area. Think about the bones. And yet, oh no, not me. I'm such a rebel, me. I'm used to growing up in the hood and then you end up just pushing the mainstream stories, eh? We need to stand on the right side of history. You have some beetles, crickets, some grasshoppers. <laughs> Interesting how that works. On a completely unrelated note, this show was specifically funded by various different groups, which is basically Canadian government funded. Canadian taxes. Maybe the kids would like to try? Do you want to eat some worms? These are grasshoppers? Yeah, they're gross. Grasshoppers are only interesting when they're alive because they rub the back legs together. I don't know what that was meant to be. Cinnamon and sugar. <laughs> Cinnamon and sugar grasshoppers, you disgusting bins. My favorite. Oh! Yo, Tug, what's the weirdest meat you've ever eaten? Robin, I mean... <laughs> Had a chance to grab some grub? He brought his own. Yeah, he, he brought his own widgety grubs. You have to bite the head off first, otherwise it eats you back on the way down. Oh, you disgusting peasants. This place really is the end of civilization. Ew. 
wrong. Don't try it. It's disgusting. The apocalypse will not be normalized. Got a job for you. That makes a lot of sense, Robin, because if you had a job, you wouldn't be doing it yourself. Always try and palm it off onto somebody else, the work, eh? So she's like, we need to find out what's on this. You are a millennial. I'm sure you'll manage it. Probably encrypted. I'll sort it out for you. Homeless guitar guy is back on a stage. You would have thought he'd be handing his CVs into places, but no. He'd probably prefer if you gave him a job, everybody. We get a speech from Little John. People think Lionheart taught us how to fight, but instead he taught us how to be better. It's time for someone to step up and pass it on to the next generation. He's right. It's called a father. Would have been nice if you had some of them in the show, would it? You know, father. Maybe if the mothers weren't so insufferable, they might still be around. Who knows? But at that moment, the protection turns back up. It that would have been useful last week, wouldn't it? I don't know why he's back. He got shot with an arrow last time. You do remember that he's got a gun, right? What have you got? I've got a gold necklace. Yeah, look. It's really feminine, look. It's really difficult to say you're gonna beat someone up when you're wearing a necklace. That's actually quite cute. They've got matching necklaces. She's gonna be behind it. I'll bust your ass too. What's gonna happen next week? You're gonna come in with hoop earrings. You still carry your daddy's gun in there? No, but I got some concealer so you can fix your face. The gun would also be able to fix a face. Okay, we're moving on. I should I should probably, you know, you actually see a face. It is weird that they don't carry the gun around anymore though. Uh, if anything, you're gonna need it. It was very useful last time you were here. I just found the best acting. Hang on. What is this guy doing? Look at him. This guy's the best actor in the entire scene. Um, but I got some concealer so you can fix your face. <gasps> I'm gonna give you. Oh, 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 you, oh, you're repulsive, all of you. I don't want to be here. I don't know who you think you are, but whatever you are, if you could be it over there, I'd be. Oh, I'd really appreciate it. Just be, uh, just being, it's like a magnetic field. You just repulse me. I want, I want that guy's TV show. That guy's awesome. We need like a special one-off episode just following him being disgusted by the peasantry. So little John starts playing it, the big tough guy. Complete coward last time. I'll track you out here. And make all lie on heart, brawl in his grave. Keep his name out your mouth. Keep. My lion heart's name out your mouth. Oh, what's gonna happen next? You're gonna try and slap him. The only difference between these two scenes Keep his name. is that his woman actually tried to stop him. But she says, you know the rules. This is lion heart day. Anyone's welcome. We've got a rich guy upstairs who we're just insulting for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And let's face it, we're all criminals anyway. What's one more? I've got John Prince in my living room right now, El Yeah. You might infect me with civilization. I might go up there and have some class rub off on me. But my favorite thing is how fast he changed his tune. Lionheart taught Shower how to fight, but he also taught us how to do better. I'm qualified to bust your ass. So he starts losing it. I'm gonna spell it out for you. You know, all this all this stuff about you shouldn't fight. Well, that lasted long time you do anything i don't like i'm gonna put you in the ground you try so taught us how to do better to ourselves and to each other i'm gonna put you in the ground you already had the opportunity you never did it then i'm thirsty we could tell that from how you dress love richard branson's walking around their house going look at this place new apartments are a third of this size this was meant to be luxury housing so they start talking about the bill it was like if anyone votes for that they'll have the worst campaign re-election of their life it's like why uh if they force you to move you can't vote for them anyway i think they'll be fine they'll have a load of new young voters who actually work for a living. So the mayor's being pretty sensible. You could lose your house. You could lose your money. Let's do a deal. That's literally what Richard Branson offered them at the start of all this. I give you all new free houses that are really nice. What more do you want? You ungrateful. And then she makes an excellent point as to why. We make do. Without a tax base, you will always be last to the trough. And so you should be. The trough should be out of your reach. Because why would you get anything from taxes when none of you pissing work? You should be beneath the trough. You should be like, you can't be a sponger, you're entire life. The tragedy of the commons. No one cares about what they don't know. The tragedy of the commons? That you can't just drag down everybody else just so you can have something that you've not earned. Oh, is that what you want? To own us? Okay. Well, at this point, Robin's nicked so much stuff from him, she does probably owe him several years worth of work just to pay him back. I mean, I'd just give her life in prison, but... If you want to talk about trust, we need to discuss the charges against my client. Yeah, the entirely legitimate ones that we've got proof of on camera. No, we're not dropping them. Charges brought on Mr. Prince's behalf. Of course there were. She committed a crime at his house. This is what you do. Prosecute criminals. Harass, defame, destroy. She broke into his house. He turned up, she invited him here. So that's not harassment. Defamation, he's got CCTV of her actions. That's just called reality. And destroy, she committed a crime she should go to prison for it. Next. Tressie has suffered enough. She hasn't even been held accountable for her actions yet. So she's like, you need to withdraw your report of an actual crime. You're pure evil. And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. Like, if you have trust, you want to start there. And her reaction is scum. If you want trust, let's start there. See, so she's like, oh, you've got them there. It's like, no, they doesn't. Your mom's a criminal and she's going to prison.
You're going to make me beg, aren't you? All three of you are an absolute waste of oxygen. Just sit there and lie when he's the only sane, civilized, normal human being in the room. <laughs> So this guy goes and apparently gets his own gun from the car for once. I mean, he should have kept the woman around. She could have carried it for him. What? This seems a bit pointless. But a guy walks up to him and just grabs his gun. He's like, ah, oh, I was just going to shoot some people. And he gets shoved in the car to go and meet his boss. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hacker's hacking out of his pelican case. I don't know why he just doesn't carry a laptop with him. Get some food. You have some beetles, crickets, some grasshoppers. Would you leave your baby unattended? I've not had a baby. I've got a jaw. I'm not having a baby. Don't want to be a single mother as well. Fathers don't exist in this universe. <laughs> so then he starts waffling on, and I don't know why he's written this way. I find him genuinely confusing. Make my interface with my computer a transcendental experience. Think about your groin area. They don't. You just have to wiggle your fingers in the air a bit. Anyone can do it. Oh, I'm controlling the computer with my hands. Everyone can type, mate. You just do it a little bit higher than everybody else. An amalgamation of the all. The digital and the flesh. If there was any justice, she'd defenestrate him. He's like, I can't walk away from that connection. So in other words, he's just addicted to adult stuff. He's like, I can't leave it. I've got to find out how she gets out the washing machine. But at that moment, he hacks the USB. Robin is not going to like this. It's all right. I don't like Robin. <laughs> Where did that come from? And he pulled that out of his computer or something. Got over to Branson, withdrawing his complaint from the sheriff. We want the charges dropped. Obstruction, conspiracy, inciting violence. An apology would be nice. Why would he apologize? You did do all these things. This is the most ridiculous storyline in the world. You are genuinely guilty. We have proof. Over my dead body. Based economy. At least the sheriff, who's supposed to be the villain, by the way, actually has some morality. Sheriff, Madam Mayor, my department has invested considerable resources. It's not about the resources. It's about justice. She did commit the crime, therefore she should be arrested for it. Persecuting a victim of police misconduct and brutality? You're persecuting the criminal. Oh, the horror. Strenuously object. I'm sure you do. Get it done. No. You're pure evil. This is someone exploiting their position in order to get away with a crime by blackmailing a businessman. She's evil. <laughs> We're evil cows! Robin, we earned that. It's the principle of the thing. Next, we're gonna rob a bank and then sue the owner of the safe because I sprained my ankle as I was carrying out the gold. Make it make sense. I need to talk to Mary. You keep calling her Mary. Need to talk to Mary. Mary? It's Marion. Like Mary and Marion don't sound anything that's similar. You miss an entire syllable when you say a name. You're like, look, I need to talk to you. Can it wait? Well, you tell me because I've stolen your keys. We're now in front of the mayor, Richard Branson, and a lawyer going, I've stolen your property. But then we find out that getting taken to his boss was the sheriff. You're like, look, we had a deal. No guns. I had enough trouble with my own officer having the guns before and now. I never thought a criminal might use one. <laughs> Speaking of criminals, we cut back over to to Robin, and it turns out that Mary spent a lot of time with them as a kid's yachts, expensive resorts. Beach house vacations, expensive resort. Prince, you sugar daddy? Well, have you considered looking at the photo, love? You were just holding it a second ago. I don't know about anyone else, but she looks a bit young for that. If she answered yes, you could get him thrown in prison tomorrow. Prince, you sugar daddy? No, God, no. He's got too much money for me. I prefer someone a bit more common. Well, my friend's been looking through these files, and you know what he found? A 4K version of Robin. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Ah, oh, they've got the Blu-ray. <laughs> Wasn't it strange how in 1991, no one actually commented about Morgan Freeman being in it? Almost as if no one cares. She says, we keep finding payments in your name. How much have you been getting paid to throw my mum's case? I'm like, what? She literally just got her off like seconds ago and got her off for a crime that she did commit. If anything, she is an amazing lawyer. Because right now I just see some rich girl trying to screw my family. I'm like, well, I mean, everyone else has screwed them. So I thought that was your specialty. You've got a special jar for it. Right, you don't have any neon sign outside, come over and screw my family. I would never do anything to hurt Tressie or you. I'm really glad you didn't say I would never do anything to screw your family. <laughs> Because that would have been a lie. My mom catches a charge and a lawyer just drops out of the sky. She's not Mr. Bead. <laughs> that would have been cool, but no. Kind of wish it had happened now. Watching this show generally involves my brain making stuff that I'd prefer to see. But then we get it. The bombshell about why she's defending her mom. John Prince killed my father. I am going to press X to doubt. I've not watched this. I don't know why. I'm just assuming it's going to be nonsense.
As they met in college, they were friends, business partners. Richard Branson started a project, something to do with Sherwood. It was top secret. I'm trying to find out what it was. It's like, oh no. This isn't like Vincenzo, is it? Korean show, but essentially this guy buries a load of gold and then builds a block of flats over it. And the show is him trying to get the block of flats back so he can get the gold that's underneath. I hope you haven't written the same thing. All I know is it scared him. What was he doing? Was he built the Umbrella Corporation underneath it or something? Who says it scared him he quit and tried to make up for everything? Prince thought that he would talk. Dump scandals, he got him disbarred. Uh, well, considering everything Prince has done so far has been legitimate, are we sure these aren't actually real scandals and things that deserve to get him disbarred? My mom left him, he started drinking. Well, it sounds like your mom's problem then. Your mom caused him to top himself. Your mom caused all of this. She's responsible for all of it. When he was at his lowest, when he needed her the most, she pissed off. Your mom's a bint. I have no idea what any of this is supposed to do with Richard Branson though. But don't worry, it gets worse. And the money? Your dad was gone. There wasn't much left. Prince stepped in. Yeah, it really sounds like somebody who hated your family, didn't it? Your father got in trouble for various different scandals, got disbarred, so obviously there was proof of the scandals. Then his mom left him, you were the only one left, and Prince looked out after you. Doesn't really sound like he hates your family when he's looking after the child. He pretended he was taking care of me. He was taking it. He was giving you money. He wanted me on a leash. He was giving you money. He was looking after you and you're like, you just want me on a leash. Oh, you psychotic delusional. This carpet is a person with feelings. He cut me off the night. I took your mom's case. Of course he did. You're taking cases against him. Why would he fund you and give you money when you're actively attacking him. That's common sense. You're the unreasonable one here. And she's like, I'm just here to help. But Robin loses it. You you lied to us. You always did. But walking off is the smartest thing Robin's ever done because she is clearly like a compulsive liar, completely delusional, and has a really twisted and sick view of history that all comes down from basically damage her mom did when she left. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. So they continue their negotiations without the lawyer. I don't- they didn't need a lawyer anyway. They're like, look, it's got to get sorted today or there won't be a deal in time before the bill gets voted through it. Are we expecting anyone else? Thank you. Why is Branson always the reasonable one who acts like a normal human being? So the mom was like, look, what if there's a way that you can get your development and we can keep our homes? I'm like, okay. That's what he offered you at first. That he develops the building and he moves you to a new home. But at this point, you should just be put in one, to be honest. Just to end the series here, she goes in a home and I live happily ever after. Back downstairs, and honestly, I don't know why we keep going down here. The daughter's turned up in what I'm pretty sure is a hate crime. Wait, people started fighting and got flour all over me. That, that excuse won't work for the police. But don't worry, because this is a daughter raised by the previous mom. And so there's really only one attitude she's comfortable with. You know that if you took Lionheart Day as seriously as mom does. Being a complete arse. You wanna tell me something? <laughs> and don't come back. It's just a few tents in a car park. You need to take it seriously. You are what you think. Well, if that slogan's true, the people in this place don't exist. Starts to decide to randomly start whining. Oh, I've been looking after mom and you haven't. I like, know she's been off, you know, dragging down the entire area and destroying civilization. I'm trying. There's things you don't know about. Yeah, because otherwise you'd shot me into the police like I deserve. Over the sheriff, he explains the gun by just going, I'm not going there if I'm not strapped. Do you think I'm insane? You'll want to kill me. But then don't worry, she's up to her old tricks again. <laughs> Oh. Tony, check your two balls very carefully. Yeah, careful, mate. In a minute, she's going to tell you to get down. You don't watch out, you're going to have child support payments for the next 18 years. <laughs> Maybe those child support payments won't be a problem after all. She's like, look, I need monsters, not victims. I want them to boil, not die. I was promised Guy Gisborne, wild man. So far, all I've got is disappointment. Well, if you keep treading on it, what do you expect? You can't expect him to have the stamina to perform after that. You're the most hated man in Sherwood. Use it. Well, he probably would, but you've just stepped on it, love. He's gonna need at least a little bit of recovery time. What's your name, young man? I can think of a few. Basic criminal thug. I mean, there's plenty. What's up, y'all? My name is Alan. I'm today's MC. I'm Alan. I'm the friend who's only here for positive affirmation. I'm completely unthreatening, and the last time I had any testosterone in my body was 1994, which might be before I was born. He says Lionheart was help protecting us. He taught us how to fight, and the guy's like, what, he was a gang leader? He's like, no, he was more like a father figure. I'm pretty sure he was a gang leader. That's my favorite thing about this show. Yeah, we've got a father figure for the neighborhood. It's like, could have just had fathers. The fathers could have been father figures. What about the hood gang? They're not a so gang. What? Sure. They are a gang. A gang of thieves that targets innocent people so they can exploit people who work for a living and enrich themselves because they're too lazy to go out and work to earn it. The rap is a community celebrating a controversial and violent patriarch in the shadow of a new and dangerous criminal element. 
Based. I don't even want to agree with him. Like, I fully agree with you. The media is full of it. But if you want to show the media being full of it, maybe don't show them telling the truth. Sherwood and Forest neighborhood ever overcome its dark past. Well, it can if it hands in the entire gang to the police so they can go away to prison forever like they pissing deserve. I knew what I was trying to I say. Break it. Doesn't matter what you were trying to say. He's telling you, everyone, the truth. Can we do a do-over? I've got to try and convince you to lie about us so that people might think we're civilized human beings rather than thieves. And little John's like, what are you doing? Everyone knows that you're not intelligent enough to talk to with normal people. And these guys never come to Lionheart Day. Oh, sure would. Right, they don't. But this time, we've dragged down the area so much with our crime that it's now a new story about how horrific we are. Yeah, think maybe we should stop doing pissing crime. But Gisborne's back, and one of the issues with this character is it's difficult to dislike him when he's up against the Hood Gang, which is so dislikable in their own right. And it's like, eh. Tough to see him as the bad guy until he's actually doing something bad. I'm next. And at the moment, he just wants his face painted. How could those spreadsheets be better than the sugary pile of salt? I think you've just answered your own question there, love. How can playing on a computer be more interesting than consuming this absolute trash? Maybe if you stopped using that, you'd have enough energy to get a job. We will tell you numbers don't lie. That's a lie in itself. Well, no, numbers don't lie. People just lie to you with the wrong numbers. So he essentially starts doing forensic accounting. It's like the numbers don't add up. Money's going missing. Something's being hidden. But no one can hide from the all. Okay, but you're not the all, so can he hide from you? I'd love to know. Then, and I've got to be honest, I never thought I'd say this. They actually have some good music in the show. <laughs> Actually a talented singer. Can we get her to do the theme tune next week? I'd love to see her doing I'm Robin, 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 but in opera. That'd be amazing. I'm just surprised while she's singing, none of them go, can you've got anything by Drake? But at that moment, Guy Gisborne comes up, who's, who's definitely committing a hate crime. I mean, if I dressed up like that, I'd get arrested or become a Bond villain, I'm not sure. So he decides to take over the mic, and I've got to be honest. <laughs> doesn't exactly have the same singing voice. I mean, that would be a thumbnail and a half, but uh, I think there are limits. <laughs> These two are talking to each other. Ah, oh, everything's going wrong, and Marion betrayed me. I thought she was a friend. You thought she was more than that. Why are you making this so complicated? Yeah, that just happened. Why are you confused as to why he doesn't like you banging somebody else? Like, you're the one playing hot and cold, and he's somehow to blame for it? Just because he doesn't want you banging half the city? I can't understand why you're making it so complicated complicated and not just allowing me to get with everybody simultaneously. Because it is. It isn't really, is it? Like she cheated on you, mate. Ditch her. It is, right? No. Very simple. Piss off, love. That, that's, it's that simple. You're jealous of Marion? Jealous of Ma I can't believe you're jealous that I spent the entire night grinding on her face. Because we danced? No. Danced. Uh. <laughs> oh, it was just dancing. There's no difference between that and ballroom dancing. I mean, yes. We did leave permanent water damage on his floor. But I swear it was just innocent dancing. Oh, it's like you think everyone is blind with no standards. Because we didn't. You didn't want to. Because we were working. Dude, if she danced with you like that, she'd be pregnant right now. You know the first night I got back? The first day I saw you, you know, you know what I was thinking? I need to smash her face in with a stick. Because that's what you went and did. <laughs> I remember these. <laughs> you have a strange way of making it up to people, mate. I could finally make up for all the days we lost. With a stick. So he starts telling her, you wouldn't believe what I saw. And when I came back and met you, it felt like I was home. And then I realized... That you're a whore! And I only realized that when you started getting with other people in front of me, just after you'd got with me. It was a pretty big hint, actually. How unfair that was. Well, it's unfair to you, yes. And how stupid I've been. I agree with that one as well. Like, this conversation, actually. I'm kind of a mess right now. So that's why he's better off without you and should just leave. I'm sure that I want you. Well, you should have really worked that out before you started grinding on someone else's face, really, shouldn't you? As it is, piss off, love. You've got stuff to do. I want to, but... I've got balls and self-esteem. I want to, but you don't know everything. I used to be a woman. But then Alan comes in, great timing as ever. He's never normally wanted, and this time he's wanted even less. Of course, it's to tell her about the guy committing a hate crime on stage. Hey, having fun? Well, I'm having more fun now you're back in the show. You're a better character than we normally have to put up with. It's like, yeah, of course you're not having a good time. You're only here to celebrate a man who wouldn't know a good time if you shot him in the dark. We get the guy with the best facial expressions in the world back on camera. The thing is, I am wondering if that's his only facial expression, as it's exactly the same one as last time. <laughs> is this like his specialty? I can be any kind of background actor as long as it's disgusted. Yeah, I've got a special bit part on the Great British Bake Off. I just eat the sausage rolls and go, ooh. 
So then he starts singing. This is who you call your king. You can be serious. Yeah, that happens. Can rock up, obviously, with Robin on point. Because if there's one person you want to lead you into an aggressive military action, it's someone who's five foot tall and built like a drain pipe. Why would you have the military veteran in front when you can have someone who'd fall over if there was a stiff breeze? We just talk in a monotone voice to any kind of rhythm that we think works. He's packing. Check his ways. Ooh, calm down there, cowboy. Hey, Robin, check out that guy. He's packing. Look at his waist. I haven't got a tape measure, but I think we're going to have to measure that guy in meters, not inches. We're going to need to get past him. You got any plans? You could flash him. He'll pass out. It doesn't have enough blood for both ends of his body. And the boots. A cop. Nobody else would wear boots. Back to the news now. We were in Sherwood Forest. We didn't think it could get any worse. It turns out we're always wrong. And when Robin turns up with her glowing mask, it's gonna get even worse. People have become agitated by what appears to be a gang-related rivalry. People seem to be agitated by a man singing. <laughs> He's also got some random person there shaking her ass. There's one chance coming from the crowd and that's put it away, granny. Nobody wants to see that. It's blocking out the sun. We get this and I think it's meant to be intimidating. Not only has she got the Kubrick stare, but it seems like they wanted her to put her hands on her hips, but also didn't want to be stereotyped. So why don't you just put them weirdly in your pockets as if they're on your hips, but also not quite in your pockets? So you just end up looking a little bit stupid. If you could come across a bit like you've been brain damaged, that's really the look we're going for. We don't know whether you're about to beat someone up or drool out of your mouth. I'd make a great director. <laughs> But she radios to a people who are presumably waiting there. On my signal, the hacker and co find out that s some weird person's singing on stage. That is not Alan. Yeah, I can tell because this one's got a spine. <laughs> That's not Alan. He actually looks like he would stand up to a woman. <laughs> Robin bursts in the room. What is Guy doing on stage? Performing his worst hits. Well, I'm glad to know that this time it's supposed to be crap because honestly, I can't tell the difference. So Robin says he's clearly trying to rile up the crowd. He wants to fight. Nothing has gone right. Everything's trying to increase the tension. I'm like, okay, so you think when he's sent there by the sheriff because she thought he was a monster, his entire plan was to sing badly. It doesn't seem like the best plan on his part to be perceived like a monster. We get violent, they escalate, it all goes to sh- They're not the ones escalating it, by the way. If you get violent, you're the ones escalating it. They're engaging in self-defense and justice. You're the ones getting violent. We gotta be smart about this. Oh, you're in trouble. That was the worst thing that you could have said. I was like, maybe you can fix it, but if you've gotta be smart to fix it, it's game over, folks. I need you on crowd control. He's literally just said he wants to beat everyone up and you went, I need you on crowd control. Not the best at delegating, are you? <laughs> Meanwhile, the mom is pitching a really terrible idea at him. She's like, we want schools, infrastructure, grocery stores, and our condos side by side with your luxury buildings. What a terrible idea. You want compromise? This is it. Rich and poor side by side. That's not a compromise. That's a disaster. You're a load of criminal thieves, and you want to live next to rich people in apartments. This is like a fox wanting to live next to the hen house. It's a terrible idea. Nobody wants to live next to you. There's a reason why you get put out away from all the people who actually have stuff that you want to steal, to make it harder for you to steal. Please explain to me who is going to buy property next to a place like this. No one with any sense. All you will do is drag down the value of the actual building. You really don't see it, do you? No, I think he does see it. That's the problem. You want to steal from people, so you want to live next to them. Even in the heart of Sherwood, this place is just a slum to you. Yes. It seems like your main problem with Richard Branson is that he notices things and lives in reality. It's win-win. It's a disaster. Nobody wants to live next to a gang of thieves. That's why the houses next to gangs of thieves are cheaper. You know, I could just walk out. I, I would. You need to Vincenzo this place. He used C4. <laughs> but the mayor threatens him, if you don't take this, I'll veto it. If I was him, I'd just walk out. Be like, no, you can have your cesspool. I'm not subjecting civilized people to this. But he gives them the deal they want. We'll now build a load of luxury apartments next to the gang of thieves and nothing will go wrong there. And the mom's like, yeah, I've 
ruined the city again! Woo! Your mask into pieces, show them who men really- Yeah, that's still going on. But while this has been going on, one of the Hood gang has uh, been going on a stealth mission. Tell the truth a thousand times. I mean, I'm not sure they chose the right guy for it. He is a bit more obvious than the other members. But when he's up there, he cuts his microphone. And a long turn up, the criminals. This is obstruction, obstruction, obstruction of justice. Me that everyone I actually prefer the other guys. You know, the, the guy that everyone said was awful. He ain't a cool guy. That guy I'm weirdo. He not a hit. Tired, just when you think you've got through an entire episode without this. I see you snaking the grass. Yeah, this wasn't made for me. Can we go back to the opera? I miss the opera. But eventually, their mics get called as well. This guy just gets on a car and goes, You're a fool if you follow little John. You're not very good at winding up a crowd, are you? You think you match your match your man throwing stars and hide your And along comes the angry little John. Little John! Little John! He could have food! He could have, but he hasn't, cause he little John! Oh, this show just makes me miss civilization. Well, little John starts a fight with the bodyguards. Except there's two of them, and he doesn't seem to be fighting that hard. This guy's getting broadcast all over the news. Execute. Okay, even I think that's a little bit harsh, love. He's only standing on a car. But then the sheriffs turn up. I don't know why. No one's actually committed a crime yet. You actually have grounds to arrest them on previous crimes more than this one. They kidnapped a bloke, and you haven't done anything about it. But they turn up in riot gear. The hood gang run off the stage, and they just come in with shield. It's like, why? Why? Is this just for the media? Is that what you're going to say? They just grab this random guy, who I don't think was even related to anything, and start hitting him with a baton over a bench. John's kept there, who's, I'm assuming, going to be the fall guy. Maybe they've got him on CCTV kidnapping a guy last week. I don't know. <laughs> and they're moving ever so slowly forwards, where he's just like, you can literally just walk away. Just walk in the opposite direction. She's there, still in a weird, ooh, pose. I'm supposed to be evil, but I don't know how. <laughs> I'm heading down there. What? Why are you heading down there? You were getting your intelligence about what was happening from a live news report. If you needed to be there, why weren't you there in the first place? How close is it that you can just nip down? But Brands is like, I never thought we'd come to a compromise. It's sad, really, just as they hear the sirens. He smiles, because uh, obviously this was planned. What did you do? He didn't do anything. This was your people. You know, the ones you wanted to live next to, the civilized folks. Most people in society don't want to live next to thieving gangs that start fights with each other in the street. They just like to live a, a nice, happy life without all the criminals breaking the law. I don't know why this is complicated to people. It sure would. Which is correct. And then we find out his secret master plan. It's a shame that our conversations took you out of the equation. I'm sure with you, their cooler heads may have prevailed. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah. All of that would have been completely diffused if she'd just been down there going, no, you need to stop. You know, massive muscular titan that she is. She'd definitely been able to handle everybody down there. Yeah. Deluded. It's like, after this, you'll definitely find that Bill 21 has more support. It's like, yeah, but she did say she could veto it. Actually, it doesn't matter how much support it has if she wants to veto it anyway. But don't worry, we've got masks on and we're not afraid to glow. There's a way to stop this. Yeah, you know what the stupid thing was? You're the ones that started it, love. You even said if we go down there, it'll escalate it and the, pl and the sheriff will turn up. It's a trap. And then you went down there and did what you said you shouldn't do because it was a trap. We gotta be smart about this. Like, I knew you were in trouble when you said it. You didn't have to prove me right, though. We can't get caught in these masks. Hide them? Like, just put them in a locker there or something. They can't search every single container across the entire area. And they've already found your masks before. They know they're linked to this area, so it's not as if you'd lose anything, as long as you're not with them. Give them to me. D don't give them- don't. Do not give them to her. Don't stitch her up and tie her, who's an innocent, into your crimes. Robin. Oh, so she knows it's Robin. Mind you, you did keep it in your wardrobe. Give them to me. Do not make your innocent little sister an accessory to your crimes, which includes kidnapping. I can hide them. It doesn't matter if she can hide them. She's innocent. Leave her alone. Alan, much. Come on. Stop it. How long? They're coming. How long? Probably from episode one where you hid it in your wardrobe. So they decide to stuff the masks and things into the air conditioning vents. And you're like, you could probably just leave it there, love. No one's going to be searching the air con vents. But then instead she climbs in and I keep expecting a lighter saying, yippee ki -yay, mother Ho, ho, ho. It's Robin. <laughs> but the beast turns up and I'd just be like, how did you get here so fast? Did you teleport? We ran off stage before she even left the sheriff's department and we only had to run into a building. She's already here. She must be the flag. I knew Ezra Miller needed a replacement, but I didn't expect him to get changed into her. Take them! What for? Why don't you just check Prince's CCTV cameras so you have evidence of them kidnapping his son? 
And it turns out, uh oh, we forgot the bow. That's how you know it's really Robin Hood, because he was always forgetting his bow. It's part of the folklore. He always forgets his most important thing. <laughs> so loads of people are getting arrested. The mum turns up, and I'm just thinking, you're going to be wheelie useful. Miss Loxley, this is a crime scene. It's okay, she'll be used to it. She's probably caused enough in her life. Are you explaining why you beat a woman in a wheelchair on the six o'clock news? <clears throat> well, the six o'clock news is recording, so they will know why we did it. Also, no one's going to need to beat you, love. You've got handles on the back. They can just wheel you off. What are you going to do? How are you going to fight back? Kick them? Just wheel her away. This isn't that difficult. But she backs down. I don't know why. And like, oh, Prince set it up. It's like, well, Prince couldn't set it up. You're the thugs. Keep committing violent crime. I thought I could reason with that man. Well, you could. He offered you free houses and you went, no, I want to be put next to the civilized people so I can drag down their lifestyle to be as terrible as my own. You can't reason with someone when you're not reasonable. Also, your daughter keeps stealing from him, trying to kill him and kidnap his son. Where are you taking them? To a roof, I mean. You ain't seen nothing! We'll be all right, they can't keep us forever. I mean, they probably should though. I mean, it's what you deserve. You did kidnap a guy's son. These are serious crimes. And then they find the bow. Dun dun dun. There's the hacker who got caught. I don't even know how. He didn't do anything. All he did was pull the battery pack off a microphone. And we get into a point, you're like, what's going on? It's like, there doesn't seem to be an overarching story. Each episode doesn't seem to have a self-contained story. No one's learning anything. And it's just, let's see what crime we can commit this week. At this point, the only lesson I want them to learn is when you commit crime, you go to prison and you deserve it. Maybe we can actually rehabilitate her through very harsh prison sentences that you don't go around kidnapping people, assaulting them and stealing their property. And no, you don't deserve free crap, nor do you have the right to live next to people that actually work for a living. He offered you free houses, you wouldn't take them, and so now you just get what you deserve. And and despite knowing that they're not going to go to prison, no matter how long they sent them, it would never be enough, just from what we've seen in this series. Because committing the crimes is bad enough, but demanding that you subject and drag down other people just because you can't be bothered to do anything except crime is disgusting. And the mum is the person we're supposed to be rooting for in that Arguments. I'm like, no, Prince is right. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video, if you like the video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.